Welcome to another episode of the Pharmaceutical Calculation Solve Along. One of the things you are likely to do in pharmacy school or when you practice as a pharmacist is to alter the concentration of a pharmaceutical preparation. You may have to make the solution more diluted or perhaps more concentrated at other times. So in this video, what we are going to do is we are going to continue our series on how to master dilution and concentration calculations. I'll be sharing some timeless tips and tricks that you can also employ to master this type of calculations. Now, this video is for part four of a five part series. If you'd like to watch the first three videos, I'll put links to those in the description and I'll link it in the cards as well. So if you are watching the video live, you could ask your questions in the chat or if you have any questions when you watch the replay, just put them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you like this type of content, then just like the video and share it. But let's get right to the first question. Now, this question says, how much drug should be used in preparing 125 milliliters of a solution such that 15 milliliters diluted to 250 milliliters will yield a 1 is to 50 solution. Round to the nearest whole number. Do not include units. So this is a type of question that I've seen a lot of students struggle with. And that has to do with perhaps how the question is framed or phrased. And so what we can do is in analyzing the question, we may want to have some pictorial guide. Now, the first thing that is happening is we need to prepare more or less some kind of a stock solution. So you're starting off with 250. You're starting off with actually 125, 125 milliliters of a drug solution. And you want to find out how much drug you need to put into this volume to get a certain concentration later on. But the ultimate thing that you're also doing is you're making a larger preparation and in that larger preparation, the volume is actually 250 milliliters. And the way you make this solution is you take some volume from here and put it in here. So the volume you take out is 15 milliliters. And you, when you take that 15 milliliters out and you dilute the 250, you end up with the concentration. So let's call the C final of 1 is 250. So your quantity, your final quantity is actually 250 milliliters. And that's your concentration. So to make things simple or simpler, Let's begin. We have three things going on here. If that's our final, let's say this is the 15 ml will be our Q2, second quantity, and it has a concentration, so C2. Now, this C2 is the same as the concentration in this particular solution. So if we call this C1, we don't know the concentration, but we know the quantity. The quantity is actually 125, okay? But this C1 is the same as C2 because you took the solution from here. So what is happening is you are taking some amount from here and the amount of drug in this solution here will be way less than the amount of drug in the 125. Now, why is this important? Because what we can do is we can simply say that C2 times Q2 is equal to C final times Q final. And to make our computation much more easier, we can recall how to convert from ratio strength to percentage strength so that it's easy to use the algebraic expression here. So let's quickly do that. Let's say you have one gram of drug in 50 ml. That's what the one is to 50 means. And we need that in percentage strength. So that is some quantity in grams divided by 100 milliliters. Okay? So we solve for X, and X is going to be equal to 1 times 100 milliliters divided by 50 milliliters. And whatever answer we get gives us the percentage strength. So that's 2%. So now we can go work and put that information into this equation. 
we don't know what C2 is. And the main reason we are finding C2 is because it's the same, it's going to be the same as C1, and we can use that knowledge to determine how much drag will be in the 125 ml. So we are working backwards more or less. So now we have C1, C2 times Q2, which is 15, should be equal to the 2% times QF, which is 250. So C2 is going to be equal to 2% times 250 divided by 15 milliliters. And that gives us 33.33%. So that is C2. But like I said earlier, that C2 is equal to C1. So it means this concentration here is also 33.33%. So what that means is we can make a very important statement here. And that statement is 33% implies you have 33.33 grams in 100 milliliters. But we want to figure out how many grams will give us the 125 milliliters. So we set up the proportion, say how many grams will be present in 125 milliliters. So we are making use of this concentration that we discovered or we basically calculated backwards and setting up a proportion to find out if I scale to 125, what will be that quantity? Okay. So if you saw for X here, X would be equal to your 33.33 grams times the 125 milliliters divided by 100 milliliters. Now this gives us 41 point six six. Now we don't stop here because it says round to the nearest whole number so that would imply that the answer that you put in the option box, if this was on the board exam, the Naples board exam, for example, would be 42. Okay? No units. So we don't put any units there as well. So for some people, this is a tricky question. I've seen a lot of students stumble over this type of questions. And that's where it's important to have a clear understanding of the physical picture, what's going on here. Okay? Once you understand what's going on in this picture, you more or less would be able to quickly solve this type of problem. So just to summarize the high points, the key thing here is the final concentration, which is 1 is to 50 at the volume. But to note that this concentration is the same as what you're starting with, but the amount of drag in the 15 ml it's much, much different from the amount of drug in the 125 ml, okay? It's like a portion, an aliquot of what's in the mix mixture. All right, so I hope this was clear. It addressed all your questions on this type of uh, dilution calculations. And I don't see any questions in the comments or in the chat, so I'm going to move on to the next question for today. Now the question says, if 50 grams of a combination gel of hydrocortisone acetate, 1% weight by weight, and pragmozide, 1% weight by weight, are mixed with 14.5 grams of a gel containing hydrocortisone acetate, 3.5% weight by weight, and pramoxide, 1% weight by weight, calculate the percentage strength of each of the two drugs in the mixture. So here's a tip for you. Whenever you have a question, this type of dilution type questions, where you are required to find the final concentration. So when it says calculate the percentage concentration of each, 
each of these two drugs, this is telling us to find the final concentration or the concentration of each of these components in the final mixture. Whenever you have that type of question, the best approach out of the allegation and the algebraic method is to use the algebraic method. You could actually perhaps use the allegation method, but it gets a little bit more complicated. So to save you time even in your analysis, whenever you see calculate the percentage strength for a final concentration more or less, just use the algebraic approach it, it, to help you get your answer much more quickly. Now here what is happening is we have two components, so we would solve both for both of them. So let's start off with the hydrocortisone acetate. So hydro acetate. Okay. And so for the algebraic approach, it says you have C1 Q1 plus C2 Q2 equals C final Q final. Okay. So what's our C1? We can basically determine what each of those components are. So let's say C1 is going to be equal to concentration 1 here, so 1%. And then the quantity is 50 grams. Now for C2, the concentration will be 3.5. And the quantity is actually going to be 14.5. Then for C final, we don't know that, so we call that C final. And our Q final will be equal to 64.5. Now there's no 64.5 in the question, but what it is is that your Q final is equal to Q1 plus Q2 which implies that that is equal to the 50 grams plus the 14.5 grams, and that's where we get the 64.5 grams form, okay? So now that we have all this information, we can go back and put that into the equation right here. So C1 is one, then we have 50 grams plus 3.5 times 14.5 grams. That's equal to C final times 64.5 grams. So once you've analyzed it this way, now all you have is an algebraic um, equation to solve. So 1 times 50 is 50 plus 3.5 times 14.5 is actually 50.75 that's equal to CF 64.5 so 50 plus 50.75 is actually 100.75 that's equal to C final 64.5 we can divide both sides by 64.5 And actually, that should give us C final being equal to 1.56. And this is a percentage. So we can do a similar thing for the promozide. So let's go ahead and do that. So for pramoxide, we're also going to use the same equation. So you have C1, Q1, plus C2, Q2 equals C final, Q final. Now we can actually quickly tell that the final concentration for pramoxide will be 1% because you're mixing a 1% component with another 1% component, and so you end up with 1%. But for completeness, we'll actually still go through the solution so that you can see how that plays out. Okay. So once again, C1 is going to be equal to 1%, and that's from here. Then your Q 
one is still 50 grams. And we get that from right here. Then for C2, it's there. And then your Q2 is 14.5 grams. See, find out we do not know that yet, even though we can make a very good educated guess. And then the Q final is 64.5. And the reason is 64.5 is because your Q final is equal to Q1 plus Q2, and that should be equal to 50 grams plus 14.5 grams. And that should be equal to 64.5 grams. Okay? And so, we can put all of that information into the original equation. And we can say that 1 times 50 plus 1% times 14.5 grams should be equal to C final times 64.5 grams. So you have 50 grams plus 14.5 grams equals C final times 64.5 grams. On the left hand side, 50 plus 14.5 gives you 64.5 grams. Then you have C final times 64.5 grams. So we divide both sides by the 64.5 grams. Then this cancels out, gives you one, that cancels out. And so your C final is actually 1%. And so one of the important things I just need to emphasize is whenever you have a mixture you're combining two things and you're required to find the final concentration you want to use the algebraic approach you really want to do that it makes your life much more simpler if you went ahead to try and use the allegation method it will get complicated real quickly all right so i still don't see any questions in the chat box but if you have any questions later on or if you are watching the replay and you have questions just put those in the comments and I will address them as soon as I see them. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.